Welcome to Good Shepherd United Church of Christ Satan, as we join in learning about the love of God in Jesus Christ, that we might follow his lead. Please join us as we attempt to figure out how we might share that love with others. Let us pray. We gather, O oh God, wondering what dreams you may have for us. We dream of a future filled with peace and love. We seek help for others and for ourselves. We pray that you might enter our lives in undisputable ways, like when Jesus came to the disciples by walking on water in the midst of a storm. Help us find assurance while experiencing doubt so that we might become anchored in your love. Amen. I'd like to share with you these words from Scripture, from the Gospel of Matthew, the 14th chapter, the 22nd through 33rd verse. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began sinking. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Here ends the reading of God's word. May God add God's blessings not only to the reading, but also to the fulfilling of that word. Today we have a special treat in store for us. Uh, many of you are familiar with uh, Dylan Coffin. Dylan is a graduate of Lehighton High School. He is departing to go off to Susquehanna University, where he plans on studying music theory and composition. And he has spoken with us in our sanctuary before, and this is going to be his first time speaking to us virtually. And I ask that you might be attentive to what Dylan has to proclaim. Dylan. to thank Pastor for that great introduction, and as he said, uh, I'm Dylan Coffin, I'm 18 years old, and I'm a recent high school graduate attending college in the fall. This will be my sixth sermon here at Good Shepherd, and I've been here all my life, and I absolutely love it. With the help and support of everyone in this congregation, my faith has exponentially grown. And that's why I love doing these sermons from time to time, because I've definitely found God in my life, and if I can share my experiences and give someone else that same opportunity, I, I wouldn't pass it up for anything. And the reason I say all of this is because this story today from Matthew reminds us that God is with us always. This is one of my favorite stories from the Gospels because it's such a short passage, but it contains so much. It starts with Jesus sending the disciples off on a boat ahead of him. And I always find this to be a little odd because we typically think of God being ahead of us and leading us. And maybe the disciples thought this too, but regardless, they went off on their boat and Jesus went up alone on the mount to pray. And this part is fascinating to me too, because the scripture emphasizes that Jesus was alone. They say it twice, but it never says that the disciples were alone. Because without Jesus or anyone else there, technically, the disciples were alone. And the disciples probably felt this way as well. So I bet that when the waters and the wind started working against them and said of with them, 
they became frustrated and scared and helpless. They probably felt trapped and alone. They couldn't stop the storm, but Jesus could. Jesus showed his power over the waters in Matthew 8, but he did something more than just stop the storm. First, he walked on the storm and walked across the water. Now you'd think the disciples would be overjoyed to see not only their teacher, but performing this miraculous feat as well. But they actually became more afraid than they were before. Not because of Jesus, but because they couldn't recognize him and thought he was a ghost. That's when Jesus reassures them that he's there and they have nothing to fear. Then Peter does something huge. By Jesus' command, he himself walks on the water, but realizing the storm around him ultimately falls under. Jesus immediately offers a helping hand and asks Peter why he doubted. They get in the boat, he stops the wind, and his disciples proclaim that truly he is the Son of God. I love the image of storm and raging water, and not even in a biblical sense, but in a literature sense in general, because it's such a juxtaposition of what we think of in terms of water. Because water is a necessity, we need it to live. And hopefully all of us would agree that water is a pretty good thing. But in this context, it seems pretty bad. Similarly, again, hopefully all of us would agree that life is pretty good and most things in it are pretty good. But sometimes it seems bad. Sometimes life works against us instead of with us. Sometimes events in our life make us feel frustrated and scared and helpless. It's, it's easy, especially at a time like this, to feel trapped and alone. It may become difficult to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It may even become difficult to see our Savior Jesus through the storm of life. But no storm will make God disappear. As just as you reassure the disciples, He reassures us that He is there and that we have nothing to fear. So don't be afraid of his presence. Embrace it, be comforted by it. Allow him to walk onto your waters because the waters don't affect Jesus like they affect us. He has power over them. He's not pulled down or dragged under by the burdens of this world like we are. Brother, he has dominion over them and he can walk across them and over them, showing us that not only will he always make that journey to be with us, but nothing is going to separate us from him. But here's the catch. We have to make that same effort. And we cannot fully embrace his love and his care without first walking towards him and making that decision to walk towards him. In the happy and stress-free moments of life, it's easy to be faithful Thank you, God, for all this happy stuff, all this great stuff that's going on for me in my life. Thank you so much. That's easy. -er. But when life becomes hard and tiresome and overwhelming, sometimes we turn to God as we should. But sometimes God gets the bad for I know I've put him there plenty of times. And we turn to friends and family and loved ones and those people are sent by God to comfort us in our time of need and are extremely important and will continue to be there for us as God works through them. But Jesus is the one person that no matter where we are in life, no matter what our circumstances are, no matter what plagues us in our situation, he will be there for us and with us. But we may doubt. We may look around and Life may get the better of us, and we might become frightened. We may stumble. We will stumble. But even when we stumble, even when we become frustrated and angry and let that anger get the best of us, even when we completely fall and go under, God will always be there with an outstretched hand, no matter what. Take it. And more importantly, do something with it. Help those around you. Help those in your community. Make your world a better place. Take God's love. Take God's care. 
and spread it to whoever you can. Comfort both those who you love and those who you do not know. With God, all things are possible, but someone has to do something. Someone has to put things into action. Dare to be that person. Dare to walk on the water. Don't become narrow-minded. Don't get scared and give up when life starts working against you instead of with you. This is not the time to jump ship. This is time to walk on water. This is time to think outside the box. This is time to push through, to stay faithful, and to dream big. During this pandemic, all of our lives have spiraled in some capacity, big or small. And it's easy to feel scared and hopeless. But just like nothing will ever separate us from God, nothing will separate your drive from you. Because despite the, the, the crushing blow that has been this pandemic, we all still have dreams. We all still have aspirations. We all have seas to cross, good or bad. And even though right now we're stuck in our homes and we're trapped and we're boxed in and it feels like we can't get out, do you know what else is trapped and boxed in and feels like it can't get out? The thoughts in your head the ambition in your heart, and the dreams in your soul. And through it all, God works with you, works through you, and fuels the flames of your love and your care. The future is rocky. It's scary, and it's not predictable at all, both tomorrow and down the line. But that path, is already laid out for you by God. Whether you feel his presence or not, he's there. And whether that path is an easy and simple stream or a harsh and raging sea, know that he walks with you, cares for you, and will be with you today, tomorrow, and always. Your life is in his hands. All you have to do is walk, dream, believe, and love. Let's walk through the storm together with Christ.
I want to thank you, Dylan, for an inspiring word that you have shared with us. It does my heart good knowing that uh, you have such a strong foundation in your faith that began here at Good Shepherd, and to think that I got to hold you in my arms as a baby to baptize you, and then stood with you when you confirmed your vows at your confirmation. And now you are ready to go off into the world and, and tackle it as a person of faith. And my prayers, I speak not only on my behalf, but on behalf of the whole congregation, go with you as you continue to live life for God and for one another. And so as Dylan shared, God is always with us, reaching out the hand, and all we have to do is reach back and clasp it. And so in our time of prayer, that's what we do. We listen to God, we speak with God, and we respond to God. So let us pray. Holy and gracious one, we pray for our world, that there might be enough food and clean water for all to have basic needs. We pray that you might continue to let peace and security reign throughout the world, that people might have human rights and freedoms. We pray that there might be a discovery for a vaccine to cure this coronavirus and end this pandemic. We pray, O oh gracious one, for our country, that there might be peace and order as people's voices are heard for justice and mercy, that there might be understanding and acceptance of people who are different politically, socially, economically, spiritually, and ethnically, reminding us that we are created, all of us, in your image. We pray for our parish, for members and friends who are in the hospital, who are home convalescing, who are preparing for procedures, or for those who are homebound. We pray for the homeless, the hungry, the addicted, the afflicted, the unemployed, the voiceless, the depressed, the lonely, the abused, the neglected. Holy One, we pray this week for those of our parish celebrating birthdays, for Lester, Noah, Alice, Michael, Cindy, Angela, Robert, Jocelyn, Arthur, and Larry. We also pray for those members of our parish celebrating anniversaries this week, for Anthony and Susan, and Brian and Amy. Lord, in your tender mercies, hear our prayers. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. To all those who continue to support the ministry and mission of Good Shepherd United Church of Christ, we say thank you. As many of you know, even during this shutdown, our congregation continues to have numerous bills to pay, such as the mortgage, utilities, and payroll, just to name a few. The financial support of family and friends is key to successfully carrying out the good news to others that God is still with us in our dreaming and in our reality. Please consider supporting our programs that have a profound impact on children and youth and adults as we continue to grow in faith. You can send your money monetary gift through the mail or use our Tidely app for electronic giving. If you would like someone from the consistory to stop by your home and to pick up your uh, contributions in person, that can happen as well by calling the church office. And we thank you for prayerfully considering what you are able to afford. In anticipation of these gifts, I ask that you might join me in this prayer of dedication. Loving God, bless our dreams and our gifts so that others might know your renewed and life-giving power as we live into your future together. We pray in the name of Christ, your Son, our Savior. 